I bring you greetings in Jesus' mighty name. A couple of weeks ago, January the 8th, to be specific, we began a systematic study of the book of Romans. So far, we've completed four weeks. The first week, we looked at the introduction, also known as the prologue. And the next three weeks, we were in that second section of the book of Romans called the wrath of God. Now, here's the outline to the book of Romans, just for our reference, just to jog our memory. We've already covered that first part called the prologue, the introduction to the book. We are in that second section called the wrath of God, God willing. This coming Sunday, we can move on to the third section called the grace of God, what theologians often call justification, followed by which we will do a section called freedom in Christ, also known as sanctification. Then we will consider a question, but what about the Israelites? What happens to the Israelites? And then we will come to a very practical section in the book of Romans called the gospel in everyday life, after which we will finish with the closing to the book of Romans, which is found in Romans chapter 16. So the purpose of this video and the following video is to finish, is to conclude that second section called the wrath of God that we've already spent three weeks in. And the reason why there is some delay is because if you remember the last time that we met on a Sunday morning, we considered a very pertinent, a very poignant question. The question was this, what happens to the people who have never heard the gospel? And we spent the entire Sunday uh, focusing on that one question. And so I want to consider the remaining verses in chapter two and some of the verses of chapter three so, so that we can conclude and be done with the section called the wrath of God. And so I'm going to read verses 17 to 29 of chapter two. And here, if you notice, Paul is going to address the Jews exclusively. In chapter one, he addresses the Gentiles and the pagans who are living lives that are steeped in sin. They're living lives of debauchery and they're doing all these abominable acts and disgusting deeds. And therefore, it's easy for the apostle Paul to, to prove their guilt and their sinfulness. In chapter 2, the beginning, he shifts gears and he talks about the morally elite, the religious person who prides themselves on their moral rectitude. And he says, you also are a sinner because there are so many things that you do secretly. It may not be there out in the open. Maybe you're able to put on a performance and maybe sometimes you pay attention to your moral compass. But so often you're being hypocritical and you're judging others. Now he's going to talk to the Jews exclusively. And beginning in verses 17, the Apostle Paul says, Now you, if you call yourself a Jew, if you rely on the law and boast in God, if you know his will and approve of what is superior, because you are instructed by the law, if you are convinced that you are a guide for the blind, a light for those who are in the dark, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of little children, because you have in the law the embodiment of knowledge and truth, you then who teach others, do you not teach yourself? You who preach against stealing, do you steal you who say that people should not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who boast in the law, do you dishonor God by breaking the law? As it is written, God's name is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. Then he talks about circumcision, and I'll just read the remaining verses, and then I'll give a short summary of these verses. In verses 25, he says, circumcision has value, if you observe the law, but if you break the law, you have become as though you had not been circumcised. So then if those who are not circumcised keep the law's requirements, will they not be regarded as though they were circumcised? The one who is not circumcised physically and yet obeys the law will condemn you who, even though you have the written code in circumcision, are a lawbreaker. A person is not a Jew who is one only outwardly, nor is circumcision merely outward and physical. No, a person is a Jew who is one inwardly. And circumcision is circumcision of the heart by the spirit, not by the written code. Such a person's praise is not from other people, but from God. Now, what is one word that would summarize the Jews 
during the time of Jesus and also the time during which Apostle Paul writes this letter to the believers in Rome. If I were to use one word that describes the average Jew, it would be the word privilege. Now, what does that word mean? The dictionary definition of the word privilege is somebody who has special rights, certain advantages or certain immunities. And that's exactly what the Jewish person of Paul's day thought. They thought they were privileged. They thought they were entitled. Now, why did they think that way? According to this text, there are two reasons why they thought that they were privileged, that they had certain advantages and immunities. Number one, the reception of the Mosaic law, the first five books of the, the Old Testament. The second reason, the act of circumcision, which is the surgical removal of the foreskin. So because of these two reasons, the Jewish people thought that they were highly favored and they were special to God. They were so special that they believed, the average Jew believed that at the end of time, when they had to give an account of their lives, when they stood before the judge of all the earth, that they would even be excused for sins because or simply because they were a Jew. So imagine a Gentile person, a pagan and a Jewish person standing before God, the judge at the end of their lives. The Jewish person believed that if the Gentile person, even if they committed the exact same sins that, that the Jewish person committed, the Gentile person would be condemned to hell forever. But the Jewish person, simply because they're a Jewish person, would get a get a get out of get out of hell free card, if you will. And so the reason they believe that is because they got the law, they received the Mosaic law, and also because of the act of circumcision that was given to Abraham and his descendants as a sign of the covenant that God made with them. And uh, just to just to give proof of this attitude, if you look at the book of wisdom, which is an extra biblical book, no, you won't find it in our Bibles. If you look at the book of wisdom, which is written by a famous rabbi, it reads pretty much like the book of Romans, very similar to the book of Romans that Apostle Paul wrote. The, this rabbi begins by talking about all the disgusting deeds of the Gentiles and the pagans, and then he shifts gears and he, and he talks about the Jews. In chapter 15 of the book of wisdom, verses 1, here's what the rabbi says. He says, but you, our God, are kind and true, patient and, patient and merciful in all things. For if we sin, we are yours. We are still yours. We still belong to you. Nothing will happen to us. We have that immunity. Even if we sin, then he goes on to say, but we will not sin. That describes the attitude and the belief of the average Jew during the time of Paul. They said, even if we sin, we still belong to God because we are Jewish, but we still will not sin. So they thought, they thought that they are the exception when it comes to God's final judgment, that they will be excused in other words, which is why Paul writes this section to the, to the imaginary objector who says, no, but we're Jewish, we're not sin sinful. And Paul says, no, 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 everybody, each one of you, each one of us fall under the condemnation of God and rightly so. So he's saying, that's enough of all your facade. He's saying, that's enough of your spiritual tinsel. He's saying that, that that's enough of, of, of all all your style with no substance, your uh, all, all the, 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 the ritualistic things that you do on the outside but have nothing to show when it comes to your personal lives on the inside. And so he's saying, even if a man is physically uncircumcised, if he keeps the precepts of the law, then it's likely circumcised because circumcision, true circumcision is circumcision of the heart by the spirit. And so the lesson, the application from this passage, Romans chapter 2, verses 17 to 29, is fairly simple. Maybe it applies to us today in this way. Maybe it applies to the person who thinks, because I've been born into a Christian family, I have Christian parents, I have a Christian uncle who is a pastor, therefore I am automatically saved, I am automatically born again. Or maybe because uh, maybe this passage is for somebody who thinks because they go to church and sing hymns every Sunday, they automatically are born again, or they automatically have this relationship with God. Or maybe it applies to the person who maybe knows certain passages of the Bible and can quote verses from memory, and therefore they think they have a special relationship with the Lord, or they're close to God. 
um, none of these things are true. This, this section, this section of scripture is to deal with the hypocrite. The hypocrite who says, who professes Jesus as savior, but there is a mismatch between what they profess, what they proclaim, and how they actually live their lives when they're when they're uh, when they're living in secret or when they when um, nobody is watching. I I really like this inscription that was found in a German cathedral in Lübeck, and I'm going to I'm going to read this inscription for you because I feel like it, it's closely connected. It ties in well to the text that we're considering today. This uh, is what Jesus says to each one of us. He says, you call me master and obey me not. You call me light and see me not. You call me way and walk me not. You call me life and choose me not. You call me wise and follow me not. You call me fair and love me not. You call me eternal and seek me not. You call me noble and serve me not. You call me gracious and trust me not. You call me might and honor me not. You call me just and fear me not. So if I condemn you, then blame me not. And I think there's such a powerful inscription, a powerful reminder that our lives, our inward lives should match everything that we profess. In other, in other words, to state it plainly, uh, like James did, he said, don't be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. Maybe this applies to somebody who, who believes that just because they have taken baptism, they've been baptized, that uh, they are saved because they have followed uh, the commandment of Jesus in regards to baptism. And so maybe this passage today reminds us that we need to introspect, look within and deal with the hypocrisy in our own lives. Sometimes we're so consumed by the faults of others and the sins of others. And we think we're special maybe because we're born in a Christian family or we know a little bit of the Bible. This passage acts as a warning, a wake-up call to people who think exactly like that. I end with a story that my father-in-law uh, told me about. He sent it to me via a WhatsApp text. And it's about this lady who's in an airport waiting for her flight, waiting to catch her flight. So she grabs a book, but she's a little hungry. So she gets herself a bag of cookies and places it beside her seat or so she thinks. And then a man, a stranger comes and sits beside her. And then he suddenly reaches into the bag of cookies, opens it up and he, and he grabs himself a cookie and begins to eat. And this, this lady is wondering, how bold, how dare he touch my bag of cookies. And so she grabs a cookie from the bag and both of them keep taking, helping themselves to a cookie each until finally it comes down to the last cookie and then the man smiles and he takes out the last cookie. He breaks it into half, gives her half and he eats half. The woman, quite disgusted, quite disturbed by the entire incident, walks to her flight to catch her flight and then in the flight she opens her purse and she discovers a whole bag of cookies. So she realized that the cookies that she was eating actually did not belong to her. It belonged to the stranger. She thought she placed it beside her, but she actually put it into her bag. The moral, the lesson is this. We need to stop looking and being judgmental about other people's lives. We need to look within and consider that Consider the fact that we ourselves have so many areas to work on and God will only judge us based on our individual lives, not based on all the people that we've corrected, or all the people uh, who we've uh, taught the right thing to do. So this passage acts as a wake up call for each one of us to look within and to be not just hearers, as James say, said, but doers of the word. I hope each one of you have a wonderful week. God bless each one of you.